Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to do week one's check-in for March. Um, if you guys are completely new to my channel, hi guys, I am Sarah. Um, my channel is obviously Sarah Marie and I do a lot of different videos, uh, but mostly related to budgeting, planning. Um, I do some Etsy stuff now that I have an Etsy shop and I also am an accountant. I'm a CPA, so I do um, videos here and there about accounting and I also documented my whole journey um, becoming a CPA. So definitely check out some of those other videos. Um, everything that you guys see here is either from my Etsy shop, um, all the budget stickers are from my Etsy shop, and then um, I use Erin Condren stuff almost exclusively. Um, I love her planners. I have a life planner. I also have the Deluxe Monthly, which is the smaller version here. Um, I will have it linked down below. And then I do use the Petite um, On The Go Folio as well for like Etsy related stuff. Um, for my I'm pretty excited because I am going to be using an academic planner pretty soon for my work planner. So I'm going to share a little bit about that later on um, when I receive it. But I just wanted to do a little intro because I know a lot of people watch from, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of comments on older videos and I never really introduced myself. So I figured I would start today. Um, so anyway, some of the categories I like to track for my weekly check-in, and if again, if you're new, I choose to do weekly check-ins just to see how we're doing on some of the categories that we have in our budget that we either overspend or that I just want to keep a closer eye on. Um, I feel like when you create a budget, and this is the same, like I learned this in accounting as well, when you create a budget, it's a one-time thing. You're creating it at like one day, and it's applied for the entire month and things come up there's no way to know everything that's going to come up and a lot of the things that i do in my budget help prepare for things that might be you know unexpected but here and there you'll have things that come up like for example my sister decided to visit like very last minute last week and so that definitely threw a wrench in not only our plans but also budget related stuff um so i'm a big believer of create a budget, try your hardest to estimate everything you can, but then make sure you're following through and actually recording all of your expenses. Because if you create a budget, but you don't follow through, you don't track your expenses and you don't compare your budget to actuals, there's no point. You're not going to save what you think you're going to save. You're going to feel super confused at the end of the day. Um, and I know this firsthand because I've dealt with that. Um, before I did paper and pen budgeting like this, I had an Excel budget. I created for the entire year. I never changed it per month, which is like a rookie move. Like you have to change it per month. Things are always different per month. Um, and we would look at our bank account every month and be like, why didn't we save money? And if you looked at what we were spending for eating out, if you looked at what we were spending to go to movies and bowling and all of the fun stuff that, you know, early 20 people want to do, we're like, holy crap, we're spending a lot of money. We did not we did not cut back on things at all. We just did what we wanted to do. And luckily we financially could do that because we both were working full time. We didn't have kids. Our apartment was fairly cheap. Um, but as an adult, after buying our house, we realized we can't do that anymore. So now that's kind of where we're at. So I like to set up my budget like this. I have my budget here, which I separate into variable and fixed expenses. And then I have my weekly check-in right next to it. So I can kind of compare as I'm going through. I do track all of my, um, all of my expenses on the monthly view. Um, I have a little key here. So everything in green would be income. Groceries are pink. Gas, which obviously are for our cars is in yellow, household is gray, anything other. So if I have like a really miscellaneous um, thing in my budget, that would be in purple, bills are in blue, and then unbudgeted is in orange. So I just keep that there. I know what my, what my um, different categories are and what color they are, but I feel like it's nice to have just in case I like, I'm like, oh, what color do I do other stuff? or for you guys when you're seeing me do these weekly check-ins. So let's go ahead. Obviously it's the first month in, um, or the first week in March. There's nothing recorded yet. I like to track groceries, gas, household, eating out, which is a cash divider. So I'll cash, I'll count my cash and then unbudgeted. Um, you do see amounts over here. And again, if you're new, you probably don't want that, don't know what those are. Um, I do like to keep track of certain things separate that I consider coming directly from savings. So um, a lot of baby stuff is coming from savings because 
there's just no way to estimate those things. And I don't want my budget to look skewed that we're constantly off over budget because things come up. Like Mila, for example, needed a size two nipples for her bottles now. So I bought um, 12 of those, those were $23.94. So instead of like having something unbudgeted, which really isn't unbudgeted, like we know we're gonna have to buy baby stuff, um, I decided to just take it straight out of savings. One other thing you could do is do a sinking fund for it, but I found that sinking funds are very similar to having it in our budget. Like I don't want to constantly see that we're you know, having that as a negative number in our sinking funds when really, like, I know I'm not going to overspend on baby stuff. If she needs nipples, she needs nipples. Like, there's not much you can do. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started with groceries. Um, so, I'm just going to add everything up. We, I'm going to be honest with you, my sister came on Friday. She left Wednesday. So, today is Thursday. We have not um, meal planned this week. So, everything that you guys see here is just random stuff that we picked up. Um, not at all meal planned. Um, I am hoping that starting on Monday, because the weekend we usually eat out or like, or with family and stuff, I'm hoping starting on Monday that we will have like a meal plan for every day and that we'll continue to do that because I go back to work on the 24th. So we have a couple weeks to figure it out. Like how crazy is that? Oh my gosh. I'm so scared for that. Um, but we need to figure it out for sure. We need to get into the habit and I feel like it takes a couple weeks to get into the habit of that. So anyway, that was a super long intro explaining everything, but hopefully if you're new, you under, you know, you got a good glimpse of it. And even if you're not new, hopefully if you didn't know all of that, you know, you now know. So, okay. 35, 43, 26, 14, 770, 2007. And I think that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those off because I keep track of when I last recorded stuff by checking it. Um, so for example, when I do my next check-in, let's say we went grocery shopping on Saturday. If I didn't check it off, then I know, okay, I need to record this in this upcoming week's check-in. So that comes out to be $89.34. Eighty nine thirty four, and when I budgeted for groceries, I gave us six hundred and fifty dollars. So that means that we have five hundred and sixty dollars and sixty six cents remaining. And I like to see how much we have left per week. So again, I'll look at the Sundays in the month because ideally that's when we would go grocery shopping. So we have one, two, three, four left. So I'll divide that number by four. And we have $140 and um, 16 cents per week. Sorry, 140, I was gonna put 160. 140, 16 per week. So pretty good shape. I think that's totally doable for us. Um, Jason stocked up on some stuff from Macy and that's why a lot of those things from Target are a little bit more expensive, but I think we're in good shape in terms of that. Um, next is gas for our car. So that's going to be everything in yellow. So Jason did get a car wash, which I include in, um, gas. And then he did fill up on gas with the RAV4. So that was $29.29. That ends up being $34, $34.29. And I always budget $150 per month for gas, which is always around what we spend. And so that means we have $115.71. I don't do remaining per week because honestly, we don't fill up every week. We we just fill up whenever the cars need it. So that's something that we don't need to do. And then um, in terms of households, again, that's gonna be everything in um, gray. So we have 33.53 here. We have 22.99. I picked up some Lush stuff for Macy, like bath bombs and stuff. I don't always do that, but once in a while I will. And she normally lasts for a while, so I got a lot of stuff and I know it's gonna last her for a while. Um, so $22.99, $12.16, and then $28.63, which brings us to $97.31, which is like right, well, I mean, we budget $100 per month, so if we need anything else, we are in trouble. Um, so we have 269 remaining and again, I'm not going to do that per week because we don't buy certain things per week. Um, I know we're good on 
I know we're good on like um, paper towels, like paper plates and stuff just in case people come to visit because we had to pick that stuff up for when we had people over this past week. Um, we're good on toilet paper. I just bought new body wash. Um, I just bought like new shampoo and stuff. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't anticipate needing anything else. So it's good to know that we're like, you know, we're pretty much out of it because now I know, okay, like if there's anything that we need, let's just wait. Um, try and wait as long as possible to get those things. Like I mentioned before, my sister did come to visit. Um, so we have been eating out pretty much almost every meal. Um, and I have to say it makes your body just exhausted doing that. Um, so again, I'm hoping that we get into the habit of just eating more at home and eating healthier. Um, but that does mean that our eating out is probably gonna be a little bit lower than it normally would just because we've used our eating out money and we've used a little bit of our vacation sinking fund, which you'll see in a second. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and count what we have left over for eating out. So we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80. One, two, three, four, five. So we have 185 remaining. And just for the heck of it, I budgeted 300. So we spent 115 in one week. Um, so 185 divided by, let's see. We have one, two, three, four. Four weeks remaining. So we have $46.25 per week so not too bad that's actually like around what I would normally budget for us um, I knew she was coming into town when I created my budget so I made sure to like add a little bit of extra um, but that's not too bad considering that like a lot of times we would split stuff so they would pay for something and then we would pay for something so for example like if we would go to Benihana's for lunch like we would pick up the tab and then when we would have Giordano's for dinner they would pay for it um I always try and do that I try and be fair as possible so um anyway um we did spend quite a bit of money hopefully going forward we can just you know cut back and again with the meal plan that should be a lot easier so I think in terms of budget wise we're doing pretty well so far let me go ahead and mark that because I almost forgot um we did not have anything unbudgeted so that is good um and obviously this doesn't apply to either um so I think we're doing pretty well in March in terms of sinking funds um we did have some transactions out of sinking funds so I don't know the last time I I don't think you guys saw, saw any of this. So I did pick up some clothes um, from my favorite store, Dry Goods, and I used some of my own money, and then I used a little bit of my sinking fund as well. Um, I did pick up a bunch of face wash and a new foundation. Um, I always get stuff from Clinique. And now that I'm not pregnant, I'm using the acne solution stuff again. Um, so that's kind of why it's on the higher level. I do have regular face wash and stuff left, which I'm using in the mornings, and then I'm using my acne stuff at night, and it seems to be really helping. Um, so that's kind of that. And then in terms of home maintenance, Jason did pick up a bunch of stuff from Menards. Like I said, we have been eating out almost exclusively the last, since Wednesday, so almost for a whole week, or not Wednesday, Friday. Um, so we did spend $270.63 um, that came out of our vacation sinking fund. And I'm okay with that because honestly, we were thinking about going to visit my sister in March um, in Florida. And we decided to wait and go see them later on, like towards the end of summer. So um, that kind of replaces what we are going to be spending in terms of going to see them. Um, it would have been way more actually. In terms of diapers, I did have to buy diapers for both Macy and Mila. Um, I feel like Mila goes through diapers like it's nobody, nobody's business. Mila, uh, Macy just needs nighttime diapers because it seems like if she has regular diapers at night, she leaks through. At some point, we're gonna try and like transition her into not having nighttime diapers, but with a new baby and not sleeping very much as it is, I don't want to like deal with having to get Macy out of bed to go potty in the middle of the night. So that will happen eventually. And then we did get our trash bill today. So I paid that, that was $84.18. That I pay every three months. So you can see we do save money for that. And then, you know, obviously when it comes due, we don't have to pay a huge $80 bill. It was only like $30 per month. So 
that is pretty much our um, weekly check-in for the first week of March. I hope you guys enjoyed um, hearing a little background about how we do things and seeing how we're doing. Let me know how you guys are doing in March. Do you guys have any travel plans? I know right now it's not too bad in Illinois. Um, I would still love to go to Florida, but it just doesn't make a ton of sense since we just saw them. And because Mila is so little still, she's only two months old. And with all of the crazy virus stuff going on right now, I just don't even want to deal. Um, so let me know if you guys have any fun travel plans for this month and I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.